Hello, Ms. Bayi Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Yes. Hi, Vakid. So my name is Marcel. I am live coming from Boston, United States. I'm originally from Republic of Moldova. That's a country, small country in Eastern Europe. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Listen, got a question for you. Yes. How do individuals know how to find their passion? And how could you verify that that is your passion? Okay. Yeah. That's actually a good question because it's kind of like that's what I'm, I uh, was struggling myself with. Uh, being in the early stages of the university, you know, like I was kind of like struggling identifying for me what, what I really want to do. And it's actually like interesting because I was thinking about this while I was at the university, which, you know, like for, for our society nowadays, it's like they expect you at 18 years old to already know what you want to do in life. And it's kind of confusing because the more students I was talking about, nobody was exactly sure if they're really passionate about, right? It's like, it's more they pick the career because someone advised them to, or it's something their parents were doing, or it's some an industry where it brings money, you know, like IT or law. So that's when I was like questioning myself because I, I was doing business and management and that's, they, you know, like it was a very broad subject in a way. It's kind of like you learn a lot but a little bit of how to open a business and that's it so like i was thinking you know like what i really want to do in life what i'm passionate about like i'm pursuing this degree but is it something i really want to do uh, i also went you know like worked for 16 months to a corporation and what i learned at university and i discovered that i had I, like i loved it it was great but for me it was just a job to make money it wasn't something that would light me up, you know, or like wake up the next day and say, I'm excited to go to work. For me, it was like, yeah, I have to. And then waiting for Saturday and Sunday to have fun, right? So I, I struggled like for a year and a half, you know, like how, like what exactly I want to do. And I struggled for a year and a half, almost two years. And I did my college in the United Kingdom. And right when I finished college, I moved to the United States. So I, I was, you know, I was doing a lot of like jobs, like like different like part time jobs, you know, to have money being in a new country, and I still was struggling to find that answer, until I was lo looking to some YouTube videos. Myself, like I have a huge story, but I've been through a divorce, and that was my like my epiphany moment where like I want to do something with my life, right? Not just like move aside, but like finding that passion, finding what I really want. And by looking, like reading a lot of books, you know, like I, I read also the Think and Grow Rich and like uh, reading like The Richest Man in Babylon. Like I was listening a lot of like, I would say introductionary books kind of to this uh, personal development. Like I call them like kind of like the Bibles, right? Of the personal development world. And what I was like looking for an answer and what I understood is that usually our passions or what we want to do in life at some point in life, we been introduced to it. And what I mean is myself, I realized that when I was in high school, I was involved a lot about helping people. And I was doing that for free. And I was 16 years old, 17, 18 years old, right? Like at an age where you have so much free time, so you can have a choice. Either you go and party, you have spend time with friends, or you do something else. I mean, I was still having fun with friends, but I was finding time to go and help people. I would organize like different projects. Some summertime, I would go like we had an, a, a project and we would go in like schools with in uh, smaller cities around countries and go and talk about personal development. How can they develop themselves? You know, like how can they find funding to fund their local schools? You know, like to do anything extra, it's kind of like to improve themselves. So when I was sitting down and I was, you know, like thinking about that, so like, that's what I was doing for free. Like that's, and I was doing it even in an early age and I've never actually thought about it because like I was doing it for free. So I never thought that like, I, like I can do it for a living or finding ways to do it for a living. So finding that passion and for everybody else is, it's going like a self-awareness. It's going back in time. If you are, especially, even if you're at a young age, it's kind of looking, what were you excited when, when, you, when you were younger? 
what's something that lights you up? Maybe it's a hobby that you're doing and you don't realize that it's actually something that excites you. Because we live also in a, in a, I would say in a society and worldwide where we have access to internet. When, when I was young, we had no internet. I was introduced to internet when I was like 16, like, 15, like 14, 15, right? Now everybody has access to it. So even if you are passionate about something you don't think you can monetize or use it for a living, you can teach it to somebody else, right? Uh, you can uh, help kids to paint, for example, and there's a lot of parents who would pay you to do that. So it's a lot of ways now to monetize like our passions and what you what we love, but it's very important to be aware of that factor. So what would you say the definition or the meaning is for living an extraordinary life? Because a lot of times when we talk about that, I feel like individuals might get the wrong idea that extraordinary life means you have a bigger house, bigger car, Bentley, exactly. Porsches, Lambos, like, what do we mean by extraordinary life? And sometimes it could be in materialistic things, but yes. I think in this in this context, we're not talking about that. Yes, no, we're, we're definitely not talking about that. And as much as like, you know, the materialistic stuff, I like to say that they are like the spices of life, right? They're like some fruits that we can collect. There's something that uh, inspires us in a way, right? Like, because the materialistic things is more like it's a shiny object, which... You like it in the moment, you get it, and that's it. You're not, more, you're not any more excited because it's a new normal. But what I mean, like extraordinary life for me, it's, it's, it's kind of like an easy equation. It's the quality of the emotions that you live in. Because there are so many examples of like, you know, successful people in our mind because they have the money, they have the cars, but they're not successful inside or they don't have an extraordinary life because their quality of the emotions is not the same. You know, um, I, li I like to use like a, a good example of Robin Williams because everybody knows him. He had, in our opinion, if you look on the side, he was the best life. He, he, ha he had a great husband. At least that's what his wife was telling. He had like a great family. He won Academy uh, Awards in uh, comedy. He won, won Academy Awards in drama, which is not his, uh, you know, like expertise. So he, and he had money. He had everything that we think success is, but he killed himself. He did suicide. So the question is why? It's because he didn't have a great quality of his emotions. And I'm speaking about the internal emotions, what we experience daily. Because our life can be at different stages. We can go through so many things in life. But if the quality of our emo emotions are not... Uh, as high as we need them to, we will suffer. So it's very important to always understand and also measure and see what's your quality of life, but the quality of your emotions. Do you live in a beautiful state? Do you live in a positive state, no matter what is happening? Because life will always, you know, like kick us in, in like kick us, right? Uh, and most of the time it does so we can grow. But if you we sit down, we go and ponder about it, and then we can cry, or we, you know, we limit ourselves when we go in a negative state. That's where the quality of our life is not uh, is not fulfilling anymore. So it's it's kind of like it's very important to measure your your life, and also um, I like to say that control your emotions and control your state at the same time because. Um, we have a direct control over what we experience. Like, for example, you can tell me something mean, right? Like you can say something wrong to me or you're X, Y, Z, but it's, it's under my control to decide how I'm gonna feel because that's my internal emotions. And a great way to do that, it's always analyzing our values and it's also understanding what meaning we attach because we all have, every human being, it's all different and we all have some rules about life, right? If like, if a stranger tell, tells me I am, uh, I'm ugly, then I'm gonna feel rejected or this is rejection or um, I suck. Like, you know, like anything like that, we create that in our mind. So it's very important to analyze those values and rules and align them so you live in a beautiful state because all it matters, it matters for you to have that quality of your emotions and all, always have a beautiful state. 
because life can happen. Like a lot of things can happen through life. We like I don't hope anybody goes through them, but at least everybody goes through losses. For example, everybody loses their parents at some point in their life. Everybody will fa- face some failures. As much as I hope it's inevitable, like it's it won't happen for for people like around the world, but it will happen. Some sort of failure, some sort of loss, some sort of like disappointment, right? Like we go through all of this, but it's how we leave them. There is people who I think you know, you're having control over your state is probably one of exactly. the most important things that any individual could do because. Yeah. That's the only thing we have control over. Everything else, I feel like exteriors, I mean, you can't control other people's behavior. You can't control the weather. You can't do all that. You can't control what the politician does. You can't control, like there's so much, like when you come to the realization that that's the only thing you can't full 100% control over, I think it makes entrepreneurship, business, all of these different things much easier for us to be able to do. So that's a... A little bit of a difference. So here's my other question for you. Yes. How do I start in developing that level of self-awareness where if you call me stupid, I won't take it personal? Okay. That's a good one. Because it, it, it's, it's, you know, it's also, I want to start with that. Um, just like a quick reframing for, for everybody uh, listening to us as well. We, a lot of times we create expectations. And we live in a world where people expect everything quick, everything fast, right? It's like everybody expects like the moment they open their phone, everything opens instantly. Sometimes they'll wait two seconds for their laptop to turn on and they start freaking out. Uh, For some reason, like, because things are moving faster, we live in a society where our minds and expectations start to move fast. Like, for example, everybody wants to lose weight fast. Everybody wants to find a job fast. Everybody wants money quick, right? That's what we live in a society where the get get rich quick schemes are very popular because we created some some sort of expectation that everything is easier, and we form these expectations because we look, you know, we look now on social media. We have so access to so much information, and we only see the t- the tip of the iceberg, right? Like we see everybody's success like as if it's an overnight success. Now, w- this is not true because we never, like, we don't know what actually happened before that. There is a lot of myself, I did a lot of research understanding celebrities, like how actors became actually successful. Is it like an overnight success where I had an old, myself, I had an old limiting beliefs where like, oh, he must have been at the right place and time. That's why he got the role. And going back and actually studying their success. No, it's wrong. They actually worked hard. They actually did a lot of training. Like they did a lot of work to become uh, that successful. So going now to this emotional muscle, I like to call it's, it's important to understand because it doesn't happen overnight. It's something that takes process. It's, it's kind of the same. You can't get fit if you go at the gym today and that's it. At the same time, if you go at the gym and you spend 24 hours working out 24 hours constantly, like in a time frame, you're not going to get fit as well. It's kind of like doing a little bit consistently every day. Same with your diet. If you're going to be healthy for eating healthy for one day, it's the same. You don't lose the weight. So it's the same applies to this. There has to be an expectation, understanding that nothing happens overnight. And this is something you have to commit yourself. And actually kind of like own and understand that I'm actually in control over, over my emotions and I will not let myself indulge in it. Moving forward, it's something that takes, in the beginning, it might take you like hours, right? To understand that, hey, like this emotion, like it's controlling me, but actually I'm in control. Let me change it. So creating this awareness, is kind of like being very clear what your values are. And to see what your values are, it's very simple. Write a list and ask yourself, what do I value in life? Make a list of 10, 15, then find what's the order and keep asking. Like if you wrote down last time that it's money and the second one is family, ask your question, what do I value most, money or family? And if you say family, then you switch with places and you keep doing until you find a list 
and you know, okay, these are my values. Once you know what your values are, that's when you'll be able to control your emotions a lot better because you'll get clarity about what's important for me in life. And when you know what's important for you in life, you start seeing your life in a different angle. And whenever you have those emotions, let's say if you experience today, it's kind of like keeping a journal, you know? I think it's even sad in Think and Grow, grow and Rich by Napoleon Hill. It's kind of like having a journal on a daily basis and, and asking yourself and seeing, okay, what, what emotions I had today? Okay, I felt anger. Be curious, why did I feel anger? What made me feel anger? And then you're gonna elicit your rule automatically. Oh, because he said that. And then you're gonna see, why would I get angry if he said that, right? So you start seeing your rules and then you say, you know what, I don't wanna be, be angry and you might wanna change that rule because nothing in the world is black and white. We always judge the world around us based on our rules, but it's not the same. If, if I tell you, for example, that, hey, you're ugly, it's your choice to decide you are rejected or not, even though if I say it, it's kind of, I like to use this analogy. You don't want to let someone kind of like stick the finger in your face and make you feel something because you have control. If I someone says that. something like mean to me, I'm going to say, okay, it's fine. That's your opinion. And I'm going to move my day. I'm not going to start having this internal communication. Oh, if he said that, am I really ugly? You know, I'll be like, okay, it's fair opinion and whatever. I know, I know my value. <laughs> Yeah, I, th I think writing your values and goals, I, it, it just clarifies things. I think it needs to be clarified. Like, the best example that I could say based on what you just said is when you go to a construction site, you see the main contractor or the architect or whoever that person is, they don't have the values for the building in their mind. It's on a piece of paper. So if they're not there, the next person could come in open the big plan and look, see where they're at because it's been written down and it's been identified. If you don't have that, then how do we know who's going to build it, who's putting up the wall, who's not putting up the wall, in what time, in what order, what format for this big apartment complex to be built and you and I feel safe living in it because we know things were done according to a plan and sets of values. So to me, it's like, you want to do that building a house. Why would you want to do that building your own future? And exactly. it's okay. The architect is sitting there and the person comes in and goes, this is an ugly building. They don't go, oh, you know what? One person I was passing by says it's an ugly building. Let's change the whole thing. They're like, okay, well, you're not living here. Somebody else will like it, you know? So it's, uh, you got to write it down. You got to have it. And I think if you just go over it, over it more than one time, it becomes more clear as what yep. values you got. And here's the catch. Then you won't partner up with people that don't have your values. You won't support the companies that don't have your values. You won't marry the person that doesn't have your values. You won't, you won't engage in activities that doesn't represent your values. So everything else kind of falls in line. And again, going back to what you said, it will not happen overnight. So you got to give exactly. it some time. You got to be at it. So this is not something that happens. Well. So here's my other question. If somebody is starting their journey in self-development, what is your recommendation? Where should they start? If someone is starting, probably they have some awareness that something has to change. And that I, I will share what I believe because that's what, what I've been through. Everybody... Most of the times people go through some like hardships or something happens in their life where they're like, you know what, my life needs to change something like basically it's kind of like something has to change. So what I recommend the best is just doing it, just starting with someone. We live in a world where even uh, even like African countries have access to smartphones, Internet, you know, like more. We have a lot of access to information and starting, let's say, if you have zero dollars in a bank account. You can start with just like Google and YouTube. There is so much information there. That's where I started myself. I started looking for questions. And it, it can be as basic as this, right? Like you, it can be like, if you're going through depression, what to do to overcome depression? And you're going to find information. Like that's kind of like the starting level. That's where like you start, starting searching. Because it's easier to sit down and say, I don't know how to do it. 
Very easy, like very easy access. When people tell me they don't know something, how to do it, I'm like, really? That's nothing? And they say still, yes, that means there is no level of commitment. So it's very important, as I said, like mentioned earlier, it's always about making a decision, like make that decision that you want to change your life and start feeling resourceful. What are some ways I can do? What, what is something I can do right now? If someone is listening and they want to start, we're looking for change. Ask yourself, what is something you can do right in this moment? Because there is access to everything. And then, of course, then you can go to events. There is coaches like myself. There is masterminds. There is a lot of like ways where you can expand. But the first thing to start, you start from the basic, Google. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Listen, I love the conversation. So how do people find you? People can find me right here on, the, uh, on my Instagram. They can DM me. They can look at my content. I'm publishing uh, like very consistently. So you can find more information about taking control of your mind and how you can improve your lives, basically. Listen, I want to thank you so much for taking this time and being with us this afternoon, this, this morning. Uh, hopefully, we'll get to do more videos. I thank you so much for being here. Definitely stay safe. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Same to you. Thank you very much. Oh, by the way, I okay. forgot to tell you this. I forgot to tell you this. Okay. I, had, I saw a post that you had from a long time ago. It said that if you can't dance with me in the rain, you won't be in the storm with me. And if you can't hang with me in the storm, you shouldn't be in the sunshine. Yes. That's a, that's a strong one. <laughs> that's a very, very strong one. I saw that and that was, you put that up a couple of years ago. So I like that. That resonates a lot because a lot of times, especially in, in relationship, especially in partnership, especially starting a business and, and entrepreneurship, your career. So if you can't hang in there when there's turbulences, then you're not going to be able to, you know, be in there when, when you want to enjoy the sunshine. Or if you can't handle, if you can't handle my, my, my craziness now, yes. then you shouldn't be living with me in the mansion in the future when I do make it. So I think a lot of people need to understand that concept. They need to meditate on that. That's not something you yes. observe right there. That's a, I mean, that's a whole entire hour session video exactly. just on that so yes <laughs> just read exactly. that one and put it on your page i think that's gonna get i think it's gonna resonate with a lot of people yes thank you very much. yeah that's a good idea thank you <laughs> you got it brother okay. stay safe talk to you soon thank you thank you bye-bye bye-bye